What we wanted to do is look at the phenomenon of reduced leaflet motion in bioprosthetic aortic valves that is due to subclinical leaflet thrombosis. We've described this earlier. We know that it occurs in 10% patients, but this experience was from a small number of patients. We wanted to find out if there are differences between surgical and transcatheter aortic valves. We wanted to find out if this is a finding that will respond to NOACs in addition to warfarin. And we wanted to see what are the differences even amongst different antiplatelet strategies, monotherapy, dual antiplatelet strat uh, strategies, and look at the outcome on clinical events. What we did was we had 930 patients, and of these which who were enrolled at Cedar sinai Heart Institute and Riggs Hospitalat in uh, Copenhagen. 70% uh, of these patients came from Cedar sinai and 800 and 90 patients had scans that we could analyze and what we found was that 12% of these patients had this CT finding of reduced leaflet motion which was associated with or related to subclinical leaflet thrombus. What we also found is that there was a difference between surgical valves and transcatheter heart valves, more common with transcatheter heart valves about 13% of the times compared to 4% of the times with these surgical valves, but these patient populations were different. Older patients with more comorbidities uh, in the transcatheter heart valve group. So, you know, that was an important finding. The other important finding was that dual antiplatelet therapy, which is the standard of care right now after transcatheter heart valves, was not effective in reducing the subclinical leaflet thrombus. So the prevalence of this finding in patients who were on dual antiplatelet therapy was 15% compared to 4% in patients who were on anticoagulants. What we also found was that NOACs are as good as warfarin when it comes to preventing this or in terms of treating this because we had 36 patients that we treated that had this finding and then we treated them with a NOAC or with warfarin and both of them were effective in resolving this finding and normalizing the CT scan so that's important. Now we looked at the clinical outcomes we looked at death rates and MIs which were not affected stroke rates were not statistically different they were numerically somewhat higher in patients who had leaflet motion abnormalities but there was a definite association not causation between transient ischemic attacks and reduced leaflet motion. Another important thing to mention is that we observed a small but significant increase in gradients. Now, most of these gradients were small. So if you do transthoracic echo only, you're going to miss a lot of these patients who have this finding. So I think the message is, if you have a situation where you cannot use dual antiplatelet therapy in your patients post TAVR, I think it's okay. On the other hand, I think we need to start thinking. I cannot make a routine recommendation, but I think in younger patients, the question is, would anticoagulation be more appropriate? I cannot recommend that we routinely do that, but certainly I think what our study mentions or raises the issue of having these issues resolved, okay, especially before we start using this in very young patients.